there's a house that blew up on this hut on this no, block. No. Next block. Wrong block. Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Artist formerly known as Stereo Steve here. And uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different this week. I'm going to talk about movies, cinema, entertainment of the rectangle that you stare at and watch actors and special effects and whatnot. And I've got a few uh, VCR tapes and DVDs here so I can do like the visual aid physical media format that you all love so much. And I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about some movies, some movies I've seen talked about on here on, on this platform. Also some movies I haven't seen talked about here on this platform, but I just grabbed some movies and I'm going to talk about movies. Because I got the stuff. Alright, so this is a VCR tape here. This movie is called The Stuff. It was made in 1985. And uh, basically it's about some thick, bubbly, white goo that came a bubbling out of the ground that might not be from planet Earth and looks like melted styrofoam. But it sure did taste delicious. So delicious that they got it on the market as soon as they can for people to buy and consume before doing tests that would have led them to the conclusion that it turned people into uh, zombie monster things. And you're eating it, but it's eating you. The stuff. I don't know. Was it? A half-ass remake of the blob or was it a, a political statement about aspartame NutraSweet which was rushed onto the market in a similar fashion around that time that remains to be seen and if this movie remains to be seen by you go see it just I'm not advocating or advertising these tapes or discs that I'm showing See the movie any way you can. All righty. This is from 1966. This is Incubus starring William Shatner. And it's kind of a gothic horror slow burner. All in the language of Esperanto, which... Uh, People I knew who actually spoke Esperanto said uh, that the pronunciation is pretty bad. But uh, it's William Shatner. It's in Esperanto. It's about a town that has the Fountain of Youth, but it's also a town full of demons. And William Shatner gets messed up in it. And uh, without too many spoilers, that... I, I should have told you all you need to know to make you decide whether you want to watch this or not. But yeah, Incubus. Incubus. Hello, greetings, and welcome. Welcome to the parallel universe where I never got into records and I'm doing a cooking show on YouTube. Today we're going to make... Uh, Pasta with uh, zucchini, like my mom used to make. I've got uh, some penne regatta, and I've got, uh, these are uh, Mexican zucchinis. They are a little cheaper than regular zucchinis, which saves me a few bucks, and they're just as delicious, slightly different texture. But I've made this dish before with these zucchinis, and it was totally fine. So that's what we're going to do. This is, this is seriously one of my favorite movies. This is The President's Analyst, starring James Coburn, made in 1967. And it's, it's a political satire. It's funny as hell. It is very dated 
and very 60s, but at the same time, it is uh, prescient, predictive, in ways that I don't think the movie itself was even aware of at the time. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe be giving you some spoilers, but anyway, besides, uh, besides uh, James Coburn, this movie also has uh, Barry McGuire, the guy who sang Eve of Destruction, as a uh, leader of a group of hippies that that uh, Coburn hides out with, and uh, I've got both the DVD and the VCR tape of this movie because the DVD is the original cut of the movie, which has a performance by the band Clear Light, among other things. And uh, on the VCR tape version, they didn't get licensing for some of the music. They didn't get licensing for the Clear Light song or the Barry McGuire song. So those scenes are recut with different music. And I was used to seeing it this chopped up screwy way. And then I found the actual proper way to see it. But yeah, yeah. But uh, as far as the spoiler I promised, beside, besides uh, James Coburn being the, uh, the president's psychiatrist in all these different countries, trying to kidnap him because of what he knows. There is also a subplot where the phone company wants to put chips in everybody's brain. But at the time, I'm sure that was just seen as just some absurd ridiculousness. But it gets more and more plausible as time goes by. Okay, so if you're if you're like me and you're a pyro who always puts everything on high heat, whether it calls for it or not, then uh, you might be concerned with burning the garlic. So in that case, instead of putting the garlic in first with the olive oil, wait for it to cook down a little bit, you know, and some moisture before you put in the garlic. As long as they're moisture, the garlic will be fine. I saw this movie when I was a kid on Bob Wilkins Creature Features. And it kind of it kind of tripped me out. It's called Equinox. It was made in 1970. And uh, I guess some of the people who worked on this movie went on to do some important stuff. Because this is a Criterion Collection copy of Equinox. And uh, you talk to you talk to some old bad movie buffs, and they will tell you that without a doubt, Dark Star was the godfather of the Alien movies. Well, Equinox is the godfather of the Evil Dead movies because it's a bunch of kids lost in the woods. They find an evil book. And all these stop motion monsters start chasing them around to get them to give up the evil book. And uh, the guy that played Herb in WKRP in Cincinnati is kind of the Bruce Campbell. So Equinox. Check it out. <laughs> I know the trailer's on YouTube. All right. Okay. This is one I remember seeing back in the day. And I didn't realize it was considered an old bad movie until I saw, um, who are those guys? The Everything is Terrible. Everything is Terrible, like, uses cut-ups from this movie a bunch. But uh, Free Jack was made... Uh, in 1992, and it is a sci-fi movie about the uh, dystopian future of 2009, when the ozone layer is totally fried, and uh, people are, are stealing 
with a time machine stealing people from the past so they can inhabit their bodies. And Emilio Estevez time travels into 2009. And it's also got Mick Jagger and David Johansson and uh, Anthony Hopkins. Free Jack. <laughs> Now that it's starting to cook, you can add your uh, seasonings, basil, if you don't have fresh basil, dry basil, another one, don't be stingy with the basil, some black pepper, Some oregano, not as much as basil, basil, but some oregano. And last but least, not least, some garlic salt. Because you really do not want to be stingy with the garlic. You want, uh, you know, if Dracula is like outside ready to knock on your door, you want. You want him to smell the garlic and change his mind before he knocks on your door. Here's another one that used to be on TV all the time when I was a kid. Bug. Bug. Bug was weird because it went into some weird directions by the third act. So basically the premise of bug is that there's an earthquake that cracks open the earth and these fire breathing insects from deep beneath the earth's crust make it to the surface and cause mayhem. They crawl into people's hair and set them on fire. They crawl into cars and start explosions and uh, they're just wreaking havoc but uh, then uh, in the third act this scientist gets a hold of some of these bugs and being a scientist and in a 1975 horror movie he doesn't figure out a way to kill these critters he figures out a way to inbreed them and and create mutated versions of them and uh more mayhem ensues but uh yeah <laughs> this this movie is nuts and this movie is is a lot more this william castle you know and if you're familiar with william castle's earlier work and how campy it is you'll be surprised how how actually terrifying <laughs> parts of this movie are but yeah bug there are other movies called Bug, but Bug, 1975. A little more straightforward insect horror movie. And this is from, uh, this is from 1994, and it's called Mosquito. And it's exactly what it says on the package. Gigantic mosquitoes, you know, you know, Gigantic mosquitoes terrorize a campsite, and uh, Ron Ashton from the Stooges and the guy who played Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre are like boarded up in an abandoned house, Night of the Living Dead style, and they have to fight off these giant mosquitoes. And it's beautiful. The mosquitoes are like what, like four feet long? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid bug, you go twist now! <gasps> well, that was just one little insignificant mosquito. That can't change the future, right? Okay, so now you dump the pasta into the zucchini gruel. And you mix it up. More Bob Wilkins creature feature classics.
This is another one that kind of tripped me out when I saw it when I was a kid, and it, it's held up. This is uh, from 1963, Roger Corman's X, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes. And it stars uh, Ray Milland, and it is a tale of hubris. He is a doctor who invented some drops that give him X-ray vision. And he decides that he is the most badass doctor because he can see through everything. But then they cut off his funding before he figures out how to reverse the process. So he's trapped in X-ray vision and it's driving him insane. And, uh, yeah. All right, last but not least, one you all have probably seen, and it's on YouTube. I even found a colorized version of it on YouTube. But this is A Bucket of Blood, starring Dick Miller. Dick Miller, the greatest bit part actor ever. And this might be his only lead role, but you might recognize him from the... Uh, Gun Salesman in Terminator, he was in Gremlins, he was one of the cops in Rock and Roll High School. All these little bit parts, he always turns up, but, uh, oh, I see, so Brain Lady is changing the light here. Um, on the screen is the brain that wouldn't die, but I'm not going to talk about that, you find that one yourself. But anyway, Bucket of Blood. It's a beatnik horror comedy. Um, Dick Miller is the busboy in the uh, in the uh, cafe where all the uh, beatniks hang out, and he wants to be an artist. And by accident, he figures out his artistic talent, and uh, sadly, it involves murder. <laughs> Yeah. Then you put some Parmesan cheese and some black pepper. And you are good to go. With a little imagination, you can use a Dixie cup for practically anything. A leftovers cup. A borrow a cup of sugar cup. A laundry cup. A busybody cup. A light bulb cup. There are so many things you can do with disposable Dixie cups, you might not have any left to drink out of. Due to the hazardous and dangerous environment that the illegal narcotics lab created, Police would only say the suspect lived in the house that blew up. Other neighbors on the block are cleaning up and boarding up broken windows and doors. Nine one one is not a working number for your area. For emergencies, hang up a moment and dial your operator. Blown up house, the blown up house. You know, this neighborhood was quiet as a mouse until the shit blew up and it went boom, boom. Things were sparking now, there's extra parking. <laughs> Guess I wouldn't rent that room. Okay, we've got to tie this, tie this video back to music somehow before I wrap it up. So, yeah. Over last weekend, I was I was hanging with my brother. We went on a little road trip, and we did stop at a thrift store, and I did find uh, a few albums. And uh, the first two are, are movie soundtracks, more or less, so that'll kind of be a good segue. And uh, this is the soundtrack to Bird. Bird was a biopic about uh, the great Charlie Parker. Who 
is Charlie Parker? Jazz! Starring Forrest Whitaker, directed by Clint Eastwood from what, like 1988, I think. Yeah, 88, 89, something like that. But uh yeah, this is a good movie. It's 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 worth seeing. And something interesting they did with the soundtrack, maybe kind of the lesser of two evils, was uh instead of uh instead of another horn player trying to imitate the unimitatable sound of Charlie Bird Parker they took and extracted his actual solos off of his records from the 1940s and uh, dropped them in to um, a new band performing the soundtrack, which I don't know. It's, uh, <clears throat> is it blasphemy? I don't know. It was it was done very respectfully and it's very interesting. It's very interesting to listen to, you know. I mean, they've 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 done similar things like that to Jimi Hendrix and Tupac and uh uh Bob Marley for years. So, I guess it was only a matter of time before they remixed and reshuffled the music of Charlie Parker. But uh, the musicians were really happy to create the soundtrack. And the movie's really well done. And uh, for a dollar in a thrift shop, this was worth getting. It was worth hearing. All right. The other CD I got in the thrift store. Uh, the film music of John Barry. And John Barry is most well known for... Uh, James Bond music, and this is mostly James Bond music on here, but it also has themes from Born Free and uh, The Lion in Winter, The Knack and How to Get It, The Ipcress File. So, yeah, this is this is some good uh, action music get you through it delirium yeah that's trippy yeah this was kind of the 90s when the, the techno music and industrial music kind of gave way to this new agey chill out kind of stuff and this was uh, delirium's transitional album into that called semantic spaces and, uh, yeah, if you want to get your 90s on, <laughs> but don't feel grungy, <laughs> delirium. Uh, Tchaikovsky Masterpieces uh, CD4. And uh, I'm sure you're all sick of hearing the Nutcracker, but let me direct you to Serenade for Strings in C Major, Opus 48. I dig that one, and uh, nobody really talks about that one too much. A little less famous of his works. But, uh, yeah, all right. Music, last but not least. On the very bargain bin label, Oscar Records. Music to strip by. To get the party started. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, my bro was like, yeah, you know, you could put this in a frame or something. But yeah, the cover's kind of chewed up. I assume the record was going to be fried, but the record's actually in pretty good shape. So, all right, so there, I did show some vinyl. All right, thanks for watching. Peace to y'all. See you next week with the conclusion of that uh, 70 album project.
get you, and I'm getting out of here.